Hi and welcome to this performance review. My name's Paul. Today we're going to be having a look at the WatchGuard T20. It's actually the wireless model, um, but the performance, we're not testing the wireless, we're only interested in the wired side of um, this. So um, let me give you um, some idea of how the network is actually already configured while I set a few of these bits up. We are on a dedicated one gig fiber link. We have around about two kilometers of our own fiber pulled to the property here. Um, this is not an MBN extension or anything like that. It is a dedicated link um, here to the office on one-to-one um, -one contended. Now, listen, we're in Brisbane. I have to, I've not got tens of thousands of dollars of test equipment. The idea is to show you how you can do this in your office or how you can do this from home. It's about the performance of a firewall in real world in a way that you can um, truly test. I'm up here in Brisbane. I'm limited by the test servers that I can use. So some of these um, performance reviews, we have to take that into account. So at the moment, our one gig fiber is connected to a Ubiquiti Edge Router 12. An Edge Router 12 can comfortably do a gig a second. All right, let me just run a speed test up for you with the Edge Router as my default gateway. We're never going to be able to see one gig by one gig. Why? Because we have frame size, packet size. Um, we have the fact that we're a, a one gig connection on a one gig bearer. So we're always going to have overheads um, and we're going to have MTU um, issues there. I'm also not worried about our upload speed. Why? Because our upload speed um, is a again, a relation to the test server that we're using. So I'm looking for anything that sits in that uh, above 900 megasecond is really going to show us that as far as we can see, we're doing close to that one gig connection. Probably 960, 970 is probably my perfect um, score point. Um, that would show that the test servers that we're using are not uh, having too much pressure or something else on our network is not taking some of um, that uh, speed away from us. So let's have a look at this watch guard. I currently have all the subscription services turned off. Um, in our interfaces, we have the interface of the WAN interface is connected directly to our edge router, um, and our LAN interface is connected to our uh, LAN network, to our network switches. Um, if we then have a look in our firewall rules, this is the basic config out of the box that you'll get. You'll get an HTTP pro proxy, an HTTPS proxy, FTP proxy, depending again on how you've set this up, you may get the DNS proxy and you will get a catch-all, I call it a catch-all, all packets, all protocols, all ports. What we're going to do first is we're just going to turn these um, first three policies off, or actually we'll certainly turn four policies off. Look, it shouldn't make a lot of difference here, um, but I like to show this in its basic sense so that we know that really all of this is doing is actually doing routing. Um, nothing else, this watch guard will be doing just completely routing. So we're just going to set those four, um, four main rules um, to off, and we will turn those on again once we've got a baseline of what's actually um, happening. All right, so almost just down to that last rule now, and then I'm just going to change over my uh, default gateway uh, to be the watch guard. So let's just change over a default gateway while that last one changes. All right. So now we just put this back to 234 is the default gateway, and we will now run another speed test. This is going to give us our benchmark. We have just the um, watch guard in place. So remember, it's now going my PC, LAN switch, watch guard, edge router, and out to the internet. We know that edge router can do a gig, so the edge router is not going to be messing with the performance for us. So let's have a look. I'm again going, this is an entry unit watch guard. All right, so anything that I get in that high 700s, early 800s is fantastic. But remember, it's not got any security services running on it. And the whole idea of this is to show you what it can do under load. So we're sitting there at 770 megasecond. I'd be pretty happy with that as a standard out of the box um, setup. So I'm just going to let that probably run one more time just to get an idea and see whether we've got a benchmark. I'm hoping that we maybe will hit into the 800s. Have seen that in a couple of the uh, previous uh, recordings that I've done for this, but obviously it's going to just depend on the test server that we've got. But we, as you can see, not too bad. It's dropped a little bit. I'm going to put that down to the test server and how those things are um, working. We will maybe just come back again. The, the next things we're going to turn on, we're going to turn on these um, four proxy rules. Look, these are not going to do anything because we're not sending any traffic through um, FTP to start with. So there's nothing really that we can do in, there's nothing going to mess it there. I'm going to turn on the HTTP, all right? And I'm going to turn on HTTPS. Now for HTTPS to truly work, you do need to share a certificate around with all of your machines. 
Why? Because HTTPS is an encrypted protocol. Because it's an encrypted protocol, if we want the firewall to know what it's going, what traffic is going through it, we need to get the firewall in the middle. So we need to get the firewall to be able to uh, intercept the traffic. So we need to get a certificate out to all of those machines um, first. All right, we're going to just set up the DNS proxy here as well and hit that to enable. All right, so all of our key firewall rules are now on. They're not actually doing anything, but the key firewalls are, rules are on. So let's just run a speed test again. Um, and that's just going to hopefully give us a fact that it's still doing those high. It's struggling a little bit more at the moment. I'm going to put that down to the speed test uh, server. Um, I have, like I said, seen this a little bit higher up than uh, this. Um, but there really shouldn't be anything that these firewall rules themselves are actually doing to give us any issues. What we may just do in a moment is just try it against a different test server um, just to give us um, some balance of what is happening. We'll then go and have a look at turning on some of the security services and see what can happen. So we're just going to maybe move this over to, uh, let's just see what we can do. Where was that? I just saw it go past there a minute ago. Superloop is another one that's useful for us. Um, and let's just see what Superloop is going to give us probably going to give us a slightly better speed having a look at there. Uh, no, it's not. It's going to give us actually a worse speed. All right. So like I said, slightly limited on the test servers. As a firewall, if this was doing the middle 700s to low 800s without any services running on, fantastic. We will see some performance degradation once we start putting traffic through it. Um, so here we go with our HTTP and HTTPS trunk. Um, proxies, you can see maybe we have dropped off a little bit of speed, but not a lot. So now just let's start working through some of our security um, services and turning them on. All right, so just to make this easy, I'm just going to put this onto all of the rules. So we're going to look at application control. Now application control for me, that shouldn't actually make any difference. Why? Because this is about stopping certain applications running through our network. It's a yes or no. We're not really, we're not filtering them. We're not doing anything clever with them. Um, we are just saying yes or no. All right, so we'll carry on with Superloop. We've applied this. Again, I'm probably not expecting there to be much difference. We're going to get some faster speeds now. We're getting in... Um, up again into that 700. So we're comfortable to say, as we've started to turn security services on, we're sitting at that middle 700s as a consistent speed, which is fantastic for an out of the box entry level firewall. So like I said, ATB blocker, advanced persistent threats isn't enabled on this model. This is um, just got basic security running on the T20. You don't have intelligent AV running um, either. Um, and we don't have the threat detection. Now, none of these will actually make a performance hit. Why? Because APT Blocker is about looking at certain files, blocking them, loading them to a virtual environment, uh, running them, seeing what they do. And if they then cause, uh, if they're then going to cause damage to your machine or inject malware or whatever, it will then write a signature to block them. So it's going to basically stop the file. It's not going to slow the, the unit down. It's literally going to um, block it. Now we're going to turn on botnet dis um, detection. Botnet detection. So botnets um, are generally have a control server. The control server has uh, is used to pick up uh, regular hello requests from infected machines. So machines have been infected with malware. The user often doesn't know about it. It sits dormant, but it's regularly checking back to a command server. At some point, that command server says, hey, I've got a thousand machines I've infected. I want to direct a denial of service attack against this uh, website and it will then action those to do it. So again, this shouldn't take any performance hit on our firewall. Why? Because we're just looking for packets destined for sites that are already known to host botnets. So as you can see, we're still hitting in that 300. Now the performance is picked up a little bit. We're hitting in those middle uh, 700s to early 800s every now and again. So we know that so far all of these services we've turned on are not actually doing anything. Now, DNS Watch isn't in this subscription. That's in the total security um, subscription. So um, ATP Blocker, Intelligent AV, I don't think runs on the T20, um, but is in the total security package. DNS Watch is in total security and um, Threat Detector. DNS Watch, again, is another layer of protection of your DNS. So if you're going to a website that you believe is the correct one, DHL's website, you've had an email from DHL saying, hey, you've got a package to pick up and think, oh, great, maybe I've had something, you click it, and it actually wasn't DHL's website. DNS Watch 
is a way of helping look at those DNS re requests and you can put additional levels of control in it. Again, I wouldn't have expected it to drop any of the performance that's going on for your firewall. Now we hit onto applications that will, or services that will, all right? We're going to start looking at gateway antivirus. Gateway antivirus is now going to need to look at every packet that's traveling through and try and determine if it is a um, virus or not. For the moment, we're going to apply it on our um, POP3 and IMAP rules. All right, it's actually going to go and create those rules. In fact, I won't bother about creating those um, because we're not running any of those in our speed test. Um, it will have a performance hit. It will go and have a check in our HTTP and HTTPS rule at the moment just to make sure that Gateway Antivirus has been enabled once it's set this up on here. And then we can actually do another speed test. So we're starting to now hit um, services that do have an impact on your firewall because they are having to be aggressive in what they're doing. Now at the moment, a lot of these services don't truly work until we enable um, intrusion prevention. So for a few of you people going, ah, oh, Paul, you've not done that it will come and I just want to show you how these um, things fit. So I want to just have a look in HTTP, we're going to have a look in our proxy actions, we're going to have a look down here um, in gateway antivirus and you can see that it's enabled on what we've set. All right, so at this point in time, we know that it is enabled on HTTP and HTTPS. So let's just do another speed test. We can see we're maxing out around about that 720. Are we going to start to see any degradation at this point in time? All right, we need to run a couple of these tests to really prove that we're seeing a bit of a performance drop, but we can potentially see something that's happened here. We're now down into the 600 megasecond. So there is something happening that's making me question whether now turning on gateway antivirus is taking a hit. I would certainly expect it to be taking a hit. Um, we're getting now an upload that's faster, probably because we're not scanning some of those bits and pieces. All right, so let's just run that again. Um, before we're totally true. I'm not going to expect really this, this firewall to have a massive hit until we do in turn intrusion prevention on. We are hitting again the middle 600 to 700. So we maybe lost a small amount, but hey, look, now we've hit 700. So I've been comfortable saying, as this is an action, really it's not making any difference. But I know why, because we haven't enabled the things that really need to be set up ready for it to work. Now look, we've got geolocation. Geolocation, that's, not, that's about blocking um, access from certain websites and that type of thing. So please, that's not really going to make any difference to performance here, so we're not going to be worrying about that. Um, Reputation-enabled defense. I'm just going to pop that on um, a couple of our um, firewall rules here for you. Um, and we can then, once this is um, just set on a couple of these firewall rules here, we can test again. This again is a yes or a no blacklist. So it's really not going to make much difference um, to what you are going to see as performance. All right. So those are really just going to be there. Um, we will set it. Um, it is set as it's needed to be. So let's just do another run through as a speed test. Hey, look, we're getting up into that low 800. So really everything that we've done so far is not affected by any of this throughput. Um, obviously, just the test server that we're using. Look, we're getting again our 800s or so. So we've been through application control. We've talked about APT blocker, botnet detection, DNS watch, intelligent or gateway antivirus, um, geolocation. All right, threat detection, that's something that gets installed on your local machine. So it's not something that's relevant here. Web, web blocker, um, again, this is going to actually now um, block certain sites. But again, we're yes or no answers on this. So with yes or no answers on this, really, we shouldn't have any issues um, on it. I'm just going to leave it as open, but I know that it is actually then going to be going through all of our policies. What do we want to apply it to our HTTP and our HTTPS client? It's a proxy. In the WatchGuard scenario, we have put the firewall in the middle of what's happening. So as a result, yes, it will have some level of impact. It shouldn't have much because, again, these are yes or no databases that it's querying and that's um, all that it is. So this is going to be our last one that we're going to do before we turn on um, intrusion prevention. So let's just do this. Our last one ended up at 800 megs, so we know we've not made any changes really to what's actually happening to the way this firewall was running. And again, we're up in that high 700s, early 800s. It varies a little bit um, just because of the speed test server that we're using. But again, I'm comfortable that none of those things that we've done so far have made any impact. Now,
That's great, but most of those things don't work without the Intrusion Prevention Service, IPS. What is this? This is the engine that actually goes, looks for the signatures. It looks for the potential malware that's in every packet. But Gateway Antivirus needs that to be able, that service to be running to be able to inspect the traffic. Um, many of these other services we enabled need it. So if we're out of the box, how would I set this up? I would set this up on full scan. I would set this uh, medium uh, to be allow and low to be allow. I would set here to be critical and high on drop. All right, these are things that we know are in high 80s, um, high 90% of 100%, uh, 100, high 80s or high 90% of definitely a malware or a virus or something like that and stop it. You put this in the network first and then you slowly increase the security levels over a few weeks as you work out if there's any false positives or not. So we're going to enable that on all policies. Now, if you want to increase the speed of your performance, then you can change which policies run this. So maybe you've always got um, downloads coming from a certain site. You could put a firewall rule in that uh, was higher up the list and you could turn off intrusion prevention on that, uh, on that firewall rule. And as a result, it will get a faster um, throughput. So this is really when we talk about um, the throughput of a firewall and a customer says, I would like this on my network. All right, we know so far without really doing the heavy security stuff, we can get 700 meg. Now what are we gonna truly get when we do proper firewalling? We've got everything now running as it should be. This is where we need to make sure that we spec out our firewalls as they really truly need to be on our network because with all security running we know we've done our best with a lot of those other services running but without intrusion prevention we are not so we can see this is not the speed test server failing for me this is truly what it is now this is still massively good performance all right why is the upload higher because a lot of those things we're not checking on the upload portion if we were sending data out of our um, network but we're hitting 174 meg a second. So we've dropped down from that 800 meg right the way down to 174. But this is an entry level desktop unit. Great co co cost point. And so I wouldn't be expecting this to do more than the speed that we can see on here. All right, 290, now we're seeing 300. Some of this is because it's learning um, what the traffic is about. So this helps you hopefully see a performance um, true for this watch guard um, T20. I would be comfortable in sitting on this line from about 150 megasecond, maybe to 300 megasecond. You can see the real, uh, overall result that we're getting. Probably, you've got to remember, I'm one user with very basic firewall rules. Going to put a lot more users through this. It is going to take a hammer on there. All right, so I would probably be using a T20 in a network with maybe 10 users or so. Um, and I'd be looking at putting that on certainly less than a 300 meg line. I'd probably be looking at putting it around about a 200 meg just to give me some overheads to make sure that um, when I put more firewall rules in, I've got my users using it. I have um, some um, overhead to allow that to happen. So hopefully that's been useful. Do head on over to our YouTube channel. And we've got plenty more box openings on firewalls, wireless and networking equipment. We've got other performance reviews, how to um, secure your watch guard in um, under, I think it's 45 um, minutes. If you want to learn how to get the most out of your firewalls, do subscribe and stay up to date. But hopefully that's been useful. That's a performance review on the watch guard uh, T20.